Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really does make a difference. Some scammers, like the last video I put up, Francisco Tirado, are just incompetent and probably school kids. Some scammers are part of international money laundering networks and are serious about what they do. Eric Hill first contacted my alter ego Annie on Facebook Eric is the perfect gentleman. He sent Annie a friend request and he also sent her a message saying, Hello, how are you doing? I'm Eric Hill. Would love to be your friend, but sending a friend request without your consent would be rude. Kindly send me a friend request if it's okay with you. You have a lovely and sweet smile like an angel. I would love to know more about you. I believe we could be good friends. Please send me a friend request if you don't mind. Thanks and remain blessed. To which Annie replied, Hi, but you did send a friend request and I've accepted it. That's a good start. Our Annie knows a gentleman when she sees one. They exchanged the usual small talk and then he said, I'm on a peacekeeping mission here in Aleppo with the UN military as a neurosurgeon. Please, if I may ask, how old are you? I am 60, but I get a lot of compliments saying I look younger than my age. That's good to hear. Now we'll see how good he is at paying a compliment to a lady that he's just met. Annie told him, I'm 50. His reply was, I love your honesty and charming. One would think you are still in your early 50s, you are so beautiful. I'd probably have told him where to stick himself. But Annie's much nicer than I am. So she said, I am in my early 50s, silly. I'm 50, but I guess it's OK that you think I look my age. Backtracking quickly... Yes, you look younger than your age. He then launched into the usual scammer sob story. So please, are you a free woman? I lost my lovely wife six years ago in an auto crash and she left me with two beautiful children, Reuben, 29, and Angie, 16. Annie lives in Twickenham in south-west London and our man told her that he lives in Merton, so she suggested that they could meet when he came home. He said, we will surely meet. I can't wait to come home. She said, how often do you get leave? He said, three months. She said, when is your next leave due? He said, there's a contract I'm working on and I may be through in one to two months time. Then there was a curious incident where another profile with a different name contacted Annie and started asking her the same questions. So she said to Eric, I don't trust you. You contacted me twice using two different names, didn't you? I just blocked a man called James Anderson and he just asked me the same question in the same words and he also tells me he's in Aleppo and he also tells me he's a doctor. So one or both of you is lying to me, so I'm going to block you too. Goodbye. Our man was online at the time and before Annie could find the block button, he protested and said, no, please, Am really, people impersonate me using my profile. OK, said Annie, we'll see. I've blocked him anyway. He was telling me he does neurosurgery just like you do. To prove to Annie that he was real, he gave her his phone number. He said, here's my number to show you I'm real. But the military has rules of not answering calls here in base. It's against the rules. Our only means of communicating is by email or radio phones within the camp. Then he thought he'd flatter her and said, you are a beautiful woman with a very high sense of honour. I would like to get to know you more. And then added, please, dear. I want you to give me your email address so that we can continue this conversation in a more secure and private way. Please, if you don't mind, here's mine. And so they moved to Hangouts, the classic scammer technique in case Facebook delete their fake profile. Safely over on Hangouts, he said, OK, let's continue. Yeah, go on, over to you, let's continue. He said, if I may ask, are you a God-fearing woman? I'm a God-fearing man. I do have my Christian faith to credit for my life, attitude and success. However, I don't use the name of God to attract women for my character speaks for itself. I'm not the type of man who is focused entirely on himself. It always amazes me how many of these scammers claim to be God-fearing men. I think there's something in the Ten Commandments about thou shalt not steal, isn't there? Annie told him that she and her mother went to church on Sundays and in full flow, he continued, If I may ask, my dear, how often do you go out to hang out or partying? I do not go out often that much ever since I lost my wife. 
Going out alone seems not enjoyable to me, so the few time that I go out must be with my daughter, and that have been a long time during the funeral of my late wife before I came back to Camp Base. I would be looking forward to go out with that special lady some day. And he said, party? Are you joking? I'm 50 years old, divorced. I live with my elderly mother and the UK is in lockdown. We can't go anywhere. Remember, our man claims to come from Merton in South London. Then he started asking Annie what she did for a living. She said she'd just taken on new clients. His reply was, OK, that's very good. You are a hard-working woman with potential. That's very good of you. Keep it on. I beg your pardon? What did he just say? If it was me, I'd let him have it. Well done, Annie. I can see you're learning to stand up for yourself. She said, oh, would you care to explain what you mean by you are a hard-working woman with potential? You aren't one of those sexist expletives, are you? He asked Annie a few questions about her divorce and her ex-husband and then asked her if she'd like to travel and then said, once my current ends, I want to settle down, set up a medical clinic for myself and to help those who are no longer financially buoyant enough and are facing medical issues. That would be a lovely thing to do, said Annie. He said, growing up as a child, I always want to save lives. I prefer to care for other people. What a lovely man. Many scammers have poor English skills and so find it hard to make conversation. This scammer has pretty good English, so he was very chatty and he was asking Annie about what she thinks about love, what she wants to do with her life. She told him about the apartment she was going to buy. And then finally she said to him, I keep thinking about the clinic you want to set up. Would I be able to help you? Obviously I know about keeping accounts and books. Would that be helpful? Yes, of course, he said. I think I see a bright future with you. I never really had the opportunity to share my feelings with any lady since the death of my wife. Then for a while he went all deep and meaningful, asking Annie, what's your greatest fear now in life? And saying, my great fear now is I don't want to love the wrong person because I'm too emotional and it will affect me. I want to be with the woman that we can happily live together and enjoy our life as one. After a few more deep and meaningful questions, Annie steered him back on track. You know the track, I mean, the one where he's going to ask us for money. She said, I'd much rather you tell me all about the clinic you want to start than asking me silly questions. How big would it be? What services would it offer? How will you fund it? Etc, etc, etc. His reply was, not that big, but I'm still thinking of the name. It's private, but I will give half of the fund for charity. We can plan together, he said encouragingly. Or what do you think? Oh yes, said Annie, that would be fantastic. I'd love that. When will you be able to leave the base? Here we go, we're starting to get somewhere. Since I'm in the base, the money I make here is being paid to an account I don't have access to till the control ends. And I also made some investment in cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. I plan to use all I have to make this clinic functional. So, he said, do you want us to co-own it together? And he said, I'm not sure I have enough money for that, especially once I've bought an apartment. She tells everyone that she's divorced that her divorce settlement has come through and that she's got lots of money and she's about to buy an apartment of her own. He asked, how much for the apartment? Annie told him about a place that she was looking at and he said, my contract ends in two to three months or maybe less, why don't you wait? She said, oh goodness, I suppose I could. I'll go and see it anyway, perhaps we could buy it together. Yes, he said. She said, how soon do you think it will be till you can come here? Could you get leave for a few days before your contract ends? He said, and use the other money to set up the clinic. I will speak with my boss later about it. Annie told him she'd been to see the apartment and that it was really nice. And he said, I have an appointment with my boss much later. She said, oh, that's good news. He said, once my leave is granted, I will put a call across to China to start buying stuff. What do you think, dear? Followed by that old scammer technique, when all else fails, what did you have for lunch? And he said, that sounds like an excellent idea. I'm sure you have a much better idea than I do of what will be needed. How much do you think you can invest in it? He asked. Having been given the perfect opportunity to lead him on, Annie said, well, the apartment costs about half of what I have from my divorce settlement. I'd like to keep some money in the bank, so maybe 500,000. I know we'll buy the apartment between us, but it needs some work doing. I'd like to buy a new car and use some of the money to travel as well. 
Ooh, goody! If you can hear background noises here, it's the sound of the scammer rubbing his hands together in glee. Or as he put it, OK, good. I just had a break meeting with my boss. He wasn't happy, but I told him about our plans. And he said, what did he say? He said he was touched that I had such a good heart. She said, OK, that's nice. He said, I need a week to finalise everything here. I will send mail across to the medical company in China. He continued, I have to process all my leave and payroll. That shouldn't take long, should it? asked Annie. Please say it won't. Because let's face it, we really want to know how much you're going to ask her for and we really don't want to spend the rest of the day waiting for you to tell her. He said it won't and then double checking that she really was as rich as she said she was said, how prepared are you Annie? Financial, so I know how much you can bring in. Didn't I tell you that earlier, she said. I think around 500,000. That's great, he said, because I will love you make some advance payment first to the Chinese company because due to this pandemic, there have been a lot of changes in the market. Oh, I'm sure they will need a deposit if you're making a large order, said Annie. Yes, he said, before I can finalise my payroll. They got chatting about where the clinic might be and what they were going to call it. And he said, I'll start thinking about it. You'll have to tell me what equipment we need and what we need to order from China. Yes, he said, because I want all equipment to be top notch. I agree, she said. You should always get the best you can afford. He said, yes, we have to make the best choice. So she asked, what kind of equipment will you start with? And he said, I will give you a whole round down. And so we come to that all important question that goes into every video. What equipment do you need to set up a hospital? And before I answer that, I'd like to introduce you to my new assistant, Dr Watson. Dr Watson is my online researcher. Yes, she really does exist. And yes, she really does hold a doctorate. Our man hit Google. And so did Dr Watson. Our man came back and said, OK, in setting up a clinic or hospital, there are some basic and fundamental equipment need to facilitate the daily running of the clinic, which 1. Hospital stretcher 2. Defibrillators 3. Anaesthesia machines 4. Patient monitors 5. Sterilizers 6. EKG stroke ECG machines 7. Surgical tables 8. Blanket and fluid warmers 9. Electrosurgical units 10. Surgical lights who knew that you only needed 10 things in a hospital? There is one thing missing off that list, that at least Annie thought there was, which is beds. But she wasn't going to tell him that. Dr Watson also hopped into search engine land and came up with this article from Friday, June the 9th, 2017, entitled 10 pieces of medical equipment all hospitals need. Perhaps realising that his list was a little short, he said, I will make inquiry about the amount for each equipment, though I didn't include some. OK, said Annie. Well, it's a good start. You can give me another list with some of the other items on. OK, he said, but the ten I gave you are the basic. And then hopped back into search engine land, found another list, and randomly started at J, and copied and pasted the rest for her. Janitorial equipment, laboratory diagnostic equipment, etc, etc. I won't read it all to you, finishing with telephones, televisions, water filtration system and wheelchairs. Dr Watson also hopped off into search engine land and found an article entitled A Quick Checklist of Medical Equipment Items for Your Primary Care Practice. She found the whole list, starting at A. I won't read that to you either. And just so you know, beds aren't on that list either. I guess our man's new clinic is only going to treat the walking wounded. He went back to making general chit chat and then to impress Annie with his medical skills said I started my day already one of the medical officers slum early this morning during their morning exercise but he is under intensive care now slum said Annie oh dear what's wrong with him he said he had cardiac arrest heart related issues after a couple of days the medical officer recovered and so did our man's enthusiasm for trying to get his hands on Annie's money she asked him, have you been able to do anything about ordering the supplies we need or have you been too busy? He said, I have. Hopefully by tomorrow we will be notified how much we need to deposit. Oh, that will be a good start, won't it? She said. Yes. He said, hopefully once this is done, I will forward you their account details so we can start making payment. 
Well, what do you think? She said, I think that's probably the best way. I can pay them directly. Otherwise, it could get complicated. A bit more chit-chat later about how he wanted to save lives. And finally, he said, hopefully we'll get notified from China how much advance payment we can make. And I'm glad about that. And he said, me too. It could take quite a while for some things to be delivered with the situation with flights and shipping right now. So we need to get started. Yes, he said, once I get their account details, I will forward it to you so you will start payment. OK, she said. And he said, and keep all payment receipts safe. I will, she said. I'm a bookkeeper. I do know how to keep accounts properly. Finally, that all-important message from China arrived. He said, I got a message from China with the account details. Oh, good, she said. He said, yes. How much will you be sending tomorrow? And he said, I have no idea. You haven't told me what we need. He said, first, we will have space to attend to COVID patients too. She said, no, silly. You haven't told me how much we need for the deposit. 400,000, he said. In your dreams, sunshine, in your dreams. So I will prefer you pay 50,000 tomorrow. What do you think? That sounds like a good start, yes, said Annie. Where do I need to send it? I will send you their account details now, he said. And he did. He sent the full account details of a money mill in China. At the start of this video, I said that some scammers are members of international money laundering networks. A few days into the scam, I pulled a trick on our scammer. We know our money mule is in China. Our scammer is here, Benin City in Nigeria. Would you like to hear our doctor from Merton in South London? Once the scammers ask for money, I usually just ghost them and stop talking to them. They will carry on playing the heartbroken lover for days and some will call through on hangouts and try to speak to me. Look, I already told them that we're going to make the payment today. So I just want to be sure when we can make the payment. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another Keep Safe on the Net video on YouTube.